Hello! In this video, I wanted to talk about ways to develop your work at a middle stage of dryness that we call leather hard. And leather hard is um, a, lot, a very important stage for most ceramic projects because with the newfound structure of, this dryer, of the drier clay, you can add weight of wetter material um, and you can cut and paste forms together and put, uh, put them together into more complex structures. Uh, now that the clay itself has more structure, it will support the more complex um, engineered structure. Um, you can also remove materials, so it's a great chance to take um, extra thicknesses that you needed in the wall of your hollow forms away to make them more uniformly, evenly, and evenly thick. Remember that thicker areas um, shrink and move in different, at different rates than thinner areas. So if you have a work that's very complex with thicks and thins, with excel, especially with accelerated drying, you're going to see warping and things moving um, a little bit differently because of the extra, uh, the different thicknesses. So one reason it's really, really good to try and envision your work as having one wall thickness to describe it all the way through. So this is a good chance to rectify some of those um, disparities. Um, so leather hard, what I have here in front of me are some of those pinched forms that I did in the last video. And now they've had a chance under plastic to slowly get to this middle stage of drying or leather hard stage. And it's called leather hard because the clay feels like leather. It has that um, resistance to change, but yet there's still enough moisture that it can flex a little bit. Um, you can feel the coolness of it and it has a kind of give to it still. So leather hard has many, many variations, uh, subtle variations of why you might make a change when the, it's on the drier side or on the wetter side. Mine's a little on the wetter side, but I think it'll be fine for today. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, cutting and pasting. So now that you have structure in the clay, um, whereas it was very, very wet, and if I had gone any thinner when I last touched this, it would have probably distorted or, or collapsed under gravity because of the wetness. Now I can make some dramatic changes with tools. Um, for one, one of them is just cutting. So I'm going to actually remove this rim with my long fettling knife. And you can see, it's a little soft actually. Okay, I cut it kind of on an angle. So you can see that um, there's this really, the clay now that it's drier can hold that cut without distorting the form under the, the drag of the knife. So it can resist that. You can also see that there are really sharp edges from the knife that are encoded in the cut. So you, I want, you know, as you're learning all of these stages of building something over the stages of dryness and then through the firing cycles, I think it's really important to remain really curious about what's happening. Really look for um, how your tools are acting now that the clay is drier. Um, you know, how does it respond to your touch or not respond to your touch? And get really, really curious about those things um, and that will lead you to a bigger vocabulary of how you can touch your work um, to you know represent best represent the vision you have all right so I made that cut so it's very common that these little forms want to become more complex forms like we start by by building these smaller hollow shapes and then we want them to go beyond their intimate scale somehow we want to have a more dynamic sculptural shape or a complicated shape. So let's just say I want to start by connecting this domed shape to this hollow cylinder, okay? And I'm gonna do it on an angle here, like this. So I made that cut so that the shared, there's a shared surface now um, with the curve of this, uh, the bowl. So one way is to, you could use a tool and etch a line. You know, now I can see where 
this uh, the, what surface will be attached to the rim of this cylinder on the bowl shape. I'm etched a line. Now there's a simple, a very fairly simple technique that um, one always uses whenever you're adding two different drynesses of clay together with the intention of them being wet or married together. And that includes wet material to drier material, two leather hard pieces. Anytime there's a disparity in dryness, you want to do this, which is called scoring and slipping. Scoring is roughing up the surface of the areas you want to join. I have a serrated edge. You can use a needle tool, a plastic fork, anything that will cross hatch, break the, the skin. So what I'm literally doing is I'm breaking the drier skin that formed around this as it was drying under plastic, revealing more of a wet center. It's that moisture that we want to come forward to help bridge the, um, the shrinkage rates of the two different clay. So I might do the same for what the rim of the other, just scoring it. Then the slip, slip is an admixture of your clay with water. To get to, to make a, um, a slip the fastest, you should use bone dry clay with water and then the bone dry clay quickly absorbs the water and breaks it down into this creamy yogurt-like consistency. If you have wetter clay and add water, it takes longer for it to get to this more consistent texture. Um, like yogurt, it could be thinner, it can be a little thicker. There's never, there's never one way in ceramics. There's only consequences. Um, so, you know, you'll decide um, when slip is better used um, when it's more filling and thick or when you can get away with more just sort of a, a heavy clay water as a joining material. So now I'm going to put my slip where into the join. Okay, just use a stiff brush. Okay, now I'm going to find that section, that circle. Okay. Might do it upside down so I think you can kind of see it better. Oops. So now what I have, um, what I want to do is compress the seam. So clay particles, as um, we discussed in the last video, wedging starts the compression process. And under the microscope, all clay are flat particles, almost like plates. And they're very open. The, the more wet the clay, like the slip version of clay, it's a very loose structure. They're very open and it's kind of a weakness to that. Compression starts to push those plates together to bring a kind of compressive strength. So this clay of these two pieces I'm joining have been compressed many times under my pinching, when I was wedging. The slip clay is way far behind on the compression. So one thing I can do now to help strengthen this is just, now that I've scored and slipped it, is to put compression in the seam. So I could use a sponge, a drier sponge. My clay is a little on the wet side, so it might be a nice way to, to do that. I could use a tool, like some kind of wood tool that will put a compression into there. Okay. One thing, since my pieces are a little wet, I can bring a thicker uh, part of one piece down into the seam. So I'm actually putting a more compressed, drier clay into the seam from the cylinder. I'm just dragging it down with my fingernail, leaving a little bit of that. And I can also make a small coil, uh, just a thin linear cross section that I can feed into the seam both as a physical material strengthening, but also a visual transition. So every time I've had what was made as two separate parts and I put them together, now I have to make it look, I have to consider the transition between them visually. So um, I'm going to just, like a sewing machine sewing, I'm going to just push this little coil into Okay, now I might take another tool, like I have these little flexible, different stiffnesses, rubber ribs. Um, they come with in very a lot of materials. There's one that's metal that's also flexible. It has, you know, obviously a sharper metal edge though. And then there are wooden ones that are rigid. This one's really nice because it compresses. It's also taking excess from the coil away and it's really helping me work on the visual transition there. Okay. Something 
like that. So, this is still a little soft. So you can see what, what I've done here is kind of interesting, the asymmetry of it, but what I've immediately done, if this is its orientation, is made something that's now not very stable. So when you start to add parts together into bigger hulls, you're not just building for aesthetics, you're building for stability. So you wanna make sure that whatever, however this ends up, that it can sit very confidently um, on a level shelf without being um, toppling over. Remember that it's gonna to continue to move from when you constructed it into the form. So it'll continue to shrink until it's greenware or bone dry clay. It temporarily stops shrinking and moving, but then it will continue to shrink and move in the kiln firing. So you want to make sure that whatever structure it is can withstand those subtle shifts as it's shrinking and not topple over, okay, become stable. So there's a few ways to deal with this right now. I could counterbalance it if, I can, if I'm continuing to build. There are ways to build a counterbalance to put it right back, um, have the center of gravity, you know, more stable in the middle. Um, I could literally make that the base, okay? And obviously that's a more that wide domed base is a strong base to add more sex sculptural sections to as well. I could cut the bottom counter at a counter angle so it tilts slightly back when I reorient it at the base to kind of put the center of gravity uh, back in a more stable place. So there's a few things. Uh, just for the sake of the demo, I'm going to do that. You remember this sort of asymmetrical hollow form that I pinched. Now that it's a little more solid, I can cut it. I don't. I can really cut it into sections, and the sections will maintain. You know, it'll, it doesn't really need the doming and the arching as much now that it's got the structure of dry clay. One thing I notice: if I were going to attach, let's say, this section here to the dome. Um, I would think about the thickness of this wall. Remember, anything you can do to build a uniformly thick structure for when it's all added together will help the form in terms of its uh, fireability and also the fa minimize the warping that comes with, um, you know, a lot of different thicknesses shrinking. So one thing I could do, let's say I want to preserve all this soft touching that's represented on the outside of this little form. I could go in with my long fettling knife and just scoop out to make a thinner wall that's more consistent with the thinness of the, um, these two walls. Of course, once my, my uh, when I get more of this complicated structure together, I can also go in with tools and remove material with, you know, making it more uniform and um, you know, just uh, refining through carving. Okay, so now, same deal, I'm gonna score and slip. Let's say I wanna attach it here. Scoring and slipping. I'll just do it. Because my two parts are fairly wet, I don't really need to go too crazy with the slip. There's enough water to help air it wet them. Now, one really important thing for scoring and slipping or adding to adding and subtracting from your works in progress is you need moisture to be in the parts, in the clay to make changes. So in other words, adding a bone dry piece of clay to a wetter form is usually not very successful because the wetter form is shrinking and the bone dry clay is not shrinking and it'll just crack apart. The same thing, you know, the opposite, very typical, there's something too dry and you're trying to keep building on it or adding to it with a wetter piece and it'll just keep shrinking away to crack off. So you really want to protect your work and keep all the parts that you're adding together, um, you know, with some moisture in them in the middle stage to be able to make those changes. Okay, something like this. All right, a little compression there in the seam. You know, when you start to, um, so you can see the dome is a really strong self-supporting structure that um, can really hold a lot of, as a base, it really makes sense because it will hold the weight of all of these things I'm adding to it pretty successfully because of its geometry. Um, but one thing that I've done 
is in this section, I've added it and I've created a closed um, form that has air trapped inside. So if, if I were finished with this part of the, the piece, I would need to go in and at least have one pinhole somewhere in this form for the air to escape. It could be anywhere, okay? Some discrete spot. It could be from underneath, through the um, bottom of the dome. It could be in the top. And that's all I need for the air to leave as the clay is shrinking around it, okay? If you don't, and the form doesn't crack around the trapped air before the firing, once in the firing, that trapped air could expand and blow out that section. So you always wanna make sure as you're adding sections that you're releasing all the trapped air. Okay, um, the only other thing to talk about is sometimes you've got a stack when you're making parts where gravity's helping the connection and other times you want to do things that are cantilevered off, let's say, where gravity is gonna be pushing on this form. is There has the weight of the form plus gravity and it's putting a lot more stress on this place that is connected to this form. You can compensate by working in slightly drier stages of leather hard so there's even more structure to work with in the clay. You can also really add more a nice coil of material to make a thicker transition to help provide a little extra material support at the connection point to counter gravity pushing down. Okay, so there's those things. Also, truly horizontal forms. In addition to the shrinkage, when clay is drying and shrinking, it is also deflecting. What that means is that forms, when they shrink, will be susceptible to gravity pushing. So not only is it shrinking, but it might be sagging as it's shrinking, okay? So you have some geometric structures to work with. One is a diagonal line. Instead of something that's truly horizontal, only supported on one end, which is more likely to kind of sag under gravity, if you just bring it up a little bit on the diagonal line, that will help hold it against gravity. Linear forms, you know, um, of course, in sculpture, there's, you're going to want to displace sculptural space with a linear form, almost like a line is to a drawing. But you want it like a rod of material. It, in metal, a rod of material is quite strong. We think of, you know, as like solidness as making strength. In ceramics, because of the deflection, it's not necessarily true. So one thin rod of material is going to be very prone to warping and deflecting under gravity. But if you can get hollow space in your linear form, even a chopstick threaded up through it, you will have that arching in the hollow form that will provide more of a geometric resistance to the sagging deflection part of it. So consider try to make your linear forms with some hollowness and you'll have a little more structure to work with. Okay, so uh, in the next video, I'm gonna talk more about carving leather hard forms um, and you know, refining your shapes from carving. So that's it for now. Thanks so much. Bye.